before we get started on the lesson, just a reminder, I've been telling you guys and telling you guys, all quizzes, tests, and makeup work is due by 2 o'clock tomorrow. No excuses, no exceptions. If you're absent tomorrow, that doesn't mean you get to do it on Thursday. I've been encouraging you guys, go on focus. See if you're missing anything. Come to me and say, can I do it? People, like, let me use Devin as an example. She and I have been talking about it, making plans, figuring out when the best time. She's approaching me every day. Can I do it this time, whatever? That, you guys have to be responsible. You can't come to me later and be like, I didn't know I didn't do that quiz in October. I have 180 students. I cannot stay on top of you guys all the time. So we are doing new, more challenging stuff, like I said, so you don't want to miss the notes. So if any of you want to take a test or a quiz after the notes and then just do the homework on your own time, please let me know. Bring your phone up. I will give you whatever you need, and you can work on it. You can stay into lunch if you want to. Um, you could come after school today if you want to. Um, you could come during the day sometime tomorrow as well. You could do it during the 30 minutes. I will see you in class tomorrow. But I know some of you are skipping tomorrow because of the fast test and you don't want to sit in the auditorium. So make plans for taking it today. Okay? Or see, me, see me afterwards. Okay, so before we get to actually doing it, let's write down quadratic formula on our paper. Um, remember, it was extra credit on that test but then I gave it to you on the test. We really should know this. Okay, quadratic formula. We'll go over that. Square roots. Perfect squares, right? Give us just a plain old number. Sometimes we had a negative under a radical. All that did was make an I in our answer. Sometimes I found students just really overthink that negative. It's the same exact thing you would do without a negative. You just throw a variable after it. That's it. Okay, so a negative under a radical shouldn't be scary. Not scary. And then one last thing I wanted to remind you of is sometimes you can simplify a radical. It may not be a perfect square. And you might remember we would pick up our calculator and start dividing 72 by perfect squares. And 72 is 36 times 2. Right? 72 is the square root of 36 and the square root of 2. 36 is 6. And then you have the square root of 2 left over. So we're bringing back a bunch of oldies. And you guys know that in math, everything comes back to haunt us. Think about, you guys are going to take an exam in a couple weeks. That takes that has everything from the beginning of the year to the end of the semester on it. So this is actually a great lesson to kind of get us back in the mode of thinking about things we did at the beginning, okay? And by the way, someone asked me yesterday, so I want to make sure you guys all know this, maybe you didn't know this. There's no EOC for this class. This is your first math class in a while, right? You had Algebra 1 and then Geometry. They were required to graduate. They had EOCs, lots of pressure. This class is a math credit honors credit, I make your exam, no EOC, you're allowed to exempt first or semester, second semester if you find, you know, if you follow all those things. So um, that's a good thing about this class. I'll make a review that's just like your exam and it's multiple choice, Scantron kind of situation. Okay, so let's look at, for example, we factored um, 8x so if you want to write on the same paper as your notes yesterday, or if you just want to start, if you were writing on a separate sheet of paper, it's fine. So real quick, we did SOAP, which was same, opposite, always, plus. And we filled in the blanks. We did the cube roots of these two. And I am going kind of fast because we did this yesterday. Those of you that didn't get it, you will. And then we squared the 2x. We squared the 3 multiplied them together. So that's what we did yesterday. So you have a whole bunch of factored polynomials. To solve it, we set equal to zero and solve. So we're going to have two separate factors. Whenever we have a sum or difference of two squares, you'll have like an easy one. It'll be a linear. So it's just set that equal to zero and solve. And you don't have to show every step, guys. I don't need to see the plus three. When you move that to the other side, it becomes positive. Divide by 2, we get 3 halves or 1 and a half or 1.5. That's one of our solutions. 
we're going to have three solutions. We always have the same number of solutions as our degree. This is degree three. There's one of them. We'll get the other two from this quadratic. Here's the thing. We learned how to factor quadratics and set them equal to zero. These are never factorable. This quadratic has to be used. You have to use quadratic formula. So A is four, B is six, and C is nine. And we're gonna plug in four, six, and nine right into quadratic formula and solve. Okay. So I got one solution. I'm gonna get the other two using quadratic formula. Okay, so X equals negative B plus or minus the square root, so big radical, Brian. Brian, you can't keep sleeping in here, come on. B squared minus four A C all over two times A. Right. And then we go to the radical first. So 6 squared, and remember, I just like to write right above it. 6 squared is 36, and then this is a mistake a lot of you made. Remember how I showed you to do this? You type in negative 4 times 4 times 9. You, negative 4 is part of the formula, right? It's just, it's always there. That's always the first thing you type in your calculator, and then times the other two numbers. Then, if you get a negative answer, you write... Minus. If you get a positive 144, for example, I would have written, I would have written plus because I already used the negative. Some of you were using it twice. You plug it in the calculator, then write it again. Okay. So now I'm going to go down negative six plus or minus. Now remember, those numbers I wrote above really are underneath. So let's do 36 minus 144, and I get negative 108. That means I'm going to have an I in my answer. No big deal, over eight. The hardest part of quadratic formula is simplifying the radical. Not because of the negative. The negative just means there's gonna be an I next to the number that we bring out. It's thinking what goes into 108 that's a perfect square. And you don't have to, I don't know the factors of 108. I have no idea. I have to pick up my calculator and say, okay, 108 is kind of a bigger number. I'm not gonna start like down at four or nine. I'm going to maybe start at 49. Does it go in evenly? No. So I try different numbers, and 36 happens. So you don't have to write this off to the side. I just want you guys to understand what I'm seeing here. I have, um, I'm going to have an I on the outside because of the negative, and then I have 36, and I have 3. 36 times 3 is 108. The negative is right there. 36 comes out and becomes a 6, hangs out with the I. Okay. So if 108 were positive, it would just be 6 square roots of 3. Since it's negative, it's 6 I square roots of 3. Don't be afraid of the negative. Almost done with this problem. So I would have negative 6 plus or minus 6 I square roots of 3. Right? I just rewrote that right there. Over 8. Am I look? Is there anything else I can do? Anybody remember? Yeah, we can simplify more. Remember, these numbers that are on the outside, not under the radical, are all divisible by the same number. What number are they all divisible by? Two. So, I know there's a lot going on in these problems. That's the that's where we make a lot of mistakes. You've got to be really careful. That's why I wanted all of you to see the notes. Divide that guy by two would be negative 3. Divide 6 by 2, I would get 3. Still the i's there, still the 3 under the radical, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. And that's our second set of answers. There's two answers there, guys, one with a plus and one with a minus. So your three answers are three halves and then the two that you get from here. Okay, We leave it in radical form. We don't put it in our calculator and get a decimal. Okay, That's a lot of work. I'm gonna do one in the homework with you in a second, but I gotta show you the easier one. That is the harder of the two types of factoring and solving we did yesterday, okay? So that one. Let's also, from our notes yesterday, I'm gonna, let's do, let's do A. 
okay, so do A. We factored it, so I'm going to go right to the solving part. So part A, we ended up with 3x plus 2, x squared plus 5. So when we factored, we got that answer. Okay, factored form, solving it is setting them equal to 0 and solve. Here's the thing, you don't have to use quadratic formula for these. These should be easier to solve. Set them equal to zero. And solve them. So this is a linear. This is easy. Subtract two, right? Divide by three. X is negative two thirds. There's one solution. Then I come over here. Now you could do quadratic formula with this. Quadratic formula works on all quadratics. But since we're missing that middle term, the bx, right? We don't have a b at zero. You can solve this almost like exactly like you do this one. And this will always happen on the grouping ones. It'll always be a quadratic that looks like this. So you can just subtract five. And remember, I want to get x by itself, so I would do the square root of both sides. The opposite of squaring something is square rooting it. And remember, when you take the square root of something, you always put a plus or a minus. And 5 can't be simplified, but we would never leave a negative under the radical. Easy, guys. It just comes out. You cannot be afraid of negatives under radical. That little i is nothing to be afraid of. You just don't want to forget the plus or minus. That's one solution here, two solutions here. We should be getting three solutions every single time. Where was the two solutions in the last one? Remember, quadratic formula has the plus or minus built into it for you. Okay, it's built in. Here, you have to remember to put it. And there's your three solutions, okay? So these are a little bit easier. Let's do one of the two homework, one of the four homework problems together, and that will leave three for you to do. Two of the easy ones and one of the harder. Okay, so we are going to be doing solving. So go to your worksheet and like circle star two, three, six, eight, and I'll do two with you right now. Worksheet from yesterday, two, three, six, eight. You don't need to solve the entire thing. Just those four, we're doing one together. Okay. Two, three, six, eight, two, three, six, eight. And I'm gonna do two with you. After this, if anybody wants a test or a quiz, come see me with your phone. Could you what? Yeah, but I want to do this problem first. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, at, when I'm done with this problem, anybody that wants to test or quiz, just come see me. Yeah, you have to wait till tomorrow. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you when it's going to work, and you figure out what it works for you. Okay, so this one is linear. Okay, so this is the factored form. Yesterday we did our SOAP stuff, we got to this point. Now we set them equal to zero and solve. The first set of parentheses is a linear x to the first, nice and easy to solve, okay? We just subtract one and divide by two. You could write that as a fraction or a decimal, but x is negative one half or negative 0.5. There's one of my three solutions. I'm always going to have to do quadratic formula for this one, always, okay? So identify your a, b, and C, right? A, B, C. And plug into quadratic formula. X equals negative B. Now our B is already negative, changes it to positive. So we're doing homework right now, Brian. You might want to write it on your paper. Plus or minus, big radical, B squared minus. 4 times A times C. Turn the whole thing over 2 times A. 
Anybody have a problem with where something went? Where did I, where did she get that from? Okay, so after we plug in, we go right to the radical, okay? Negative two squared is positive four. Two negatives make a positive. That number will never be negative. Then we pick up our calculator and we do negative four times four times one. Right? I always type negative four times those two numbers. I got a negative, I write a minus. X equals 2 plus or minus 4 minus 16. When I do 4 minus 16 in my calculator, I get negative 12 over 8. Okay, so this is where I like to kind of go off to the side and deal with my radical. I know there's going to be an I in my answer, right? That's what the negative tells me. There's going to be an I on the outside. So what else can I do? What can I break 12 down to? What number goes into 12 that's a perfect square? Four, right, Aaron? Four and three, right? Four times three is 12, and the negative is out here, so the square root of four becomes two. Three is stuck inside the radical. So, oops, two plus or minus, 2i square roots of 3 over 8. Yep. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. No. Well, it depends on how you put it in the calculator. If you put this in your calculator, you put it in your calculator wrong. If you put it in with the parentheses, Correct. It's two negative twos. So it's a negative two times negative two. Negative two times negative two is positive four. So if you don't put parentheses, your calculator just squares the two and then adds the negative on. Okay. So just know, like this is what I always say, guys. Don't put that in your calculator because a lot of times we make that mistake. No, two squared is four. So negative two squared is four. It doesn't. It's always going to be positive, right? The last step is, can anything be simplified? And you probably guessed yes, since I put an equal sign there. And remember what Aaron said earlier, um, you can simplify these numbers out in front. We want to find a number, if, if they all have it in common, it would have to be all three of them. Is there a number that they are all divisible by? And of course it's two, right? We can divide this guy by two, becomes one. Two divided by two is one. Plus or minus, same thing here. But since there's an I there, I mean, I wouldn't mark it wrong if you put one I, but you don't need to put a one in front of the I. And eight divided by two is four. There are your other two solutions. So one, two, three. Three total solutions. This is a lot. But there's a whole bunch of questions embedded in this problem that are review from the beginning of the year. Just simplifying a radical. How about doing negatives? How about doing quadratic formula? So there's a lot going on there. I realize it. That's why I only gave you one to do on your own. But I do have it all done. I will put it up. And you're only doing two, three, six, eight. Two, three, six, eight. Two, three, six, eight. So the work from yesterday is on here, but to kind of zero in on it, I know it's a lot, I highlighted today's answers. So there's three, six, and eight. They're highlighted, and it says solve next to it. That's the part of today that you're doing. Guys, don't just copy. Please don't just copy. Okay. Let me stop this recording. Okay. So...